Thank you all so much for joining us today for Cascade for Beginners. And so uh, my name is Andrea Andy Handy. Please feel free to call me Andy. I am a learning and development consultant with Cal Poly and I am going to be the facilitator for today's session. However, this information does not just come from me. Um, I had some really great people helping me out to develop the content that we're gonna discuss today. And so first I'd like to uh, introduce Jason, if you wouldn't mind taking yourself off mute and introducing yourself to the group. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Jason Beers and I'm the leader of web development in IT. Perfect, and so Jason is going to be on the line for us to help answer some of the more advanced Cascade questions. Now, if you do have particular questions about um, access, please go ahead and put those in the chat as uh, Jason does respond to them. If you have questions about HTML or other, I just, uh, or other items, I ask that you hold those off to the end because I realize that can take up quite a bit of our time. Uh, I'd also like to introduce our moderator today, Jesus, if would you mind introducing yourself and your role? Hello, everybody. My name is Jesus Avalos, and I'm a learning and development consultant here at Cal Poly Pomona, along with Andy. And I'll be your moderator for this session, so I'll be monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions or comments or thoughts, we'd love to hear them. Specifically, if you have any questions, please feel free to share them or relay them to either Jason or Andy. And if I don't relay them immediately, it's simply because we might be covering something a little later on. But we look forward to your engagement, your comments, and your participation. So thank you in advance for that. Back to you, Andy. Thank you, Jesus. Now with this session, it is going to be me toggling back and forth through Cascade as well as the PowerPoint. And so uh, I do appreciate your, your patience with me going back and forth because part of it, I will explain uh, what it is, and then we'll go into Cascade for a lot of our visual learner, learners, which is uh, how I learn best. I do tend to focus on the visual piece. So before we get started, I'd like you to put in the chat box, um, when it comes to Cascade, your level of experience. And you can put either beginner, moderate, or advanced. Now this is a beginner session for all of us. The word beginner is subjective, and so I realize um, I may be reviewing some material with you or you might be seeing it for the first time, but this does help us get an idea. And Jesus, what is it? Wow, we have a lot of comments coming in. Uh, so we have a lot of beginner slash rookies in the room. <laughs> and I've got a, Aaron wrote, I know nothing. So I'm right there with you, Aaron. So yes, we have a lot of beginners. We have one, actually we have one moderate, but the vast majority are beginners. Okay, well then I hope for all of you that you take something from uh, this session and for our, our moderate users, of course, if you have additional feedback at the end that you'd like to share that might support what it is that we're covering, please do. Okay, so this is what we're going to cover and I uh, am going to go, uh, I wanna say fairly slow in the beginning because that seems to be the most difficult part, at least it was for me. So the way that I developed this content was I learned how to use Cascade and I asked Jason and Alvin 1000 questions and they've been so patient in expressing all of the, the responses to me. And so first, what is Cascade? Why are we using it? Um, we're gonna discuss how to access Cascade. Now, if for some reason you've never accessed it before, when you log in, you'll get notified and then we can work on that for you. Um, just go ahead and put it in the comments if you've never accessed it before. We're going to go over how to locate and edit your page. And this is being recorded, so uh, I will be able to send this out after it's edited, of course, because some of the materials is very detailed um, and I know that it can be difficult just to remember everything. We're gonna discuss texts, cards, and accordions. These are content selections. Now, I, I realize we have a lot of comments here, Sue, so I'm gonna just stop for a second and see if there's anything we need to address. Uh, no, nothing that's pressing, just a lot of comments have never accessed, never accessed it before. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, we'll definitely, we'll discover all of that content together. Now in this session, we are going to talk about how to prepare pictures for Cascade. We are not going to go over uploading because what we found in the first session, it was just way too much content to cover. And for our beginners, that's when it became um, a little bit more advanced. And so what we're gonna do is actually create a training just for that. And we'll get your feedback in regards to other recommendations later. 
And then once you're ready to publish your page, uh, the hope is, is after today's session that you'll be able to either edit an existing page or add some new content so that you can get the information that you want up to date. Um, there are some sections that we realize that some people who have been editing or updating the pages may no longer be here or perhaps have moved on to a different role. And so hopefully you'll be able to do that once we're done with this session. And so I am going to again go back and forth. And so Cascade is the, the CMS is the university's free content management system. So if you are on my CPP and you've seen all of the different page, pages, um, this is our current management system that we're using to update our uh, web pages. So I am going to exit out of here and I am going to go into my CPP. So what I'd like you to do is if you are following along and you don't have to follow along, of course, um, if you wanna just stay focused on what we're discussing, that's great. But if you do, you're gonna to go to My CPP. And typically, um, this is the easiest way to access Cascade and make sure that we're doing it properly. Once you are in My CPP, Cascade, of course, will be um, under online services, I'm gonna just show you really quickly. Now what I did is once I located Cascade, I made it a favorite. I clicked on this right here so that as soon as I log in, it's available to me. Since I'm in it so often, it just makes life easier and will save you some time. I'm gonna go ahead and, and just log in from right here to avoid any confusion, but definitely wanna save it as a favorite if you can. Now, before we log in, let's talk about some of the content on this page because it is extremely valuable. This is where you can find a lot of the resources available to you regarding Cascade. And so what we discussed today, this will be all support uh, resources for you. And if you do have questions about some previous uh, software or items that you might be using, you can find it here as well. And so I am going to first show you down at the bottom and I'm going to open up these pages for you so that you can see what the resources look like. So Cascade Resources Training and Tutorials for Cascade, eight server, some really cool items here at the bottom. And if you are a visual learner and you like to have that printout, this is where you're going to look at those items. Jason's team, uh, they're working on this pretty consistently. And so we realize, and we'll talk about this in a second as well, is that some people are still in the old template and uh, we're still transitioning to the new template. So. Um, but some of this, if you're working on the new template, um, it'll still be relevant to what you're doing, but just realize when you're looking at it, you'll just first determine if you're in the old or new and that will help you to move through this. Let's go back here. Now, if you do need to move from the old template to the new template, you are going to submit a ticket. Now, I'm gonna ask this question. I see a lot of comments, Jesus, but do we have anybody here on the call who is still using the old template? And you can put yes or, or no, so that we can get an idea. I got a question, how can we tell? I can show you a picture actually in just a moment and you can see the difference between the two templates. That's a great, yeah. Yes, that's, okay. yeah, sorry about that Andy. We've got yes, no, no, no. No, it's not for the uh, individual web pages. It's just for department or college web pages. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> also, um, I want to point out, I was just re uh, re researching the people that said they never accessed before, and most of them are not in Cascade yet. So um, I okay. sent an email to, to um, the person to enable them, so they may or may not be able to log in during this training. Um, I'm seeing if it can happen during the training, um, and then I'll let them know they, they can get in. Thank you, Jason. So for those of you who haven't access before or don't have access right now, um, we, we do have another session coming up on the 26th and I am going to be scheduling another one so that that way if you do wanna follow along, um, that you can do that as well. And so with if you are on the old template, it sounds like most people are on the new template, but if you are on the old template, you can submit a ticket for support for colleges and departments to get it transitioned over, and this is where you would do that. Um, it's this one right here, Jason, correct? That's the email, yes. And then um, submit a support request, it's, it's the one right above it. Oh, it, it, my, my apologies, exactly right here. Perfect, so let's go ahead and log in and get into the nitty gritty. And Jesus, do I need to stop for anything? Are we okay to 
move on. I think we're okay. We've just gotten a couple of comments. Uh, I was assuming no, since I haven't done anything in Cascade before. I've never used Cascade before. Does that mean I will be on the new template is a question. And the question was, my department is on the new template, but my faculty page is old. So to answer Bill's question, um, we don't do the um, personal websites in Cascade. So it would be a department or a college website. Um, so depending on what college or department you're assigned to, um, to edit, that page may or may not be on the new template. Um, there are, however, uh, faculty sites in Cascade that have their own template, completely separate, and e-learning um, helps support training and getting those up and running. So if you are a faculty member and you're trying to work on a faculty site, um, this will show you some things you can do, but uh, e-learning is a good resource for getting your faculty site up and running. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. And what I wanted to do is before going over the dashboard, I'm going to show you what the old template and new template looks like. Um, and this actual resource, if you are on the old template, is on the resource site that I just showed you. And so this is what the old template would look like. This is how you would know. And what I really like about the way that this is created is it color coordinates. Um, when you're in Cascade and you first start using it, it can be difficult to figure out what content goes where on the page. Um, especially if this isn't necessarily your area of expertise, which it is into mine. And so I liked this because you can see over here on the left, and it is small, so I do apologize, but for example, right here, it's a left side navigation. Well, if that matches up right here to ROTC. So when you're updating the, le the left side navigation, this is what updates. Um, and this gives you an idea. Same thing with the horizontal banner um, is this picture. So this is quite helpful if you are in the old template. Now, majority of people, will probably be on the new. So I'm going to show you. Now, we don't have a resource um, yet that you can access. So what I did was I just kind of created this um, because I did like how the previous template was, was broken down. And so um, it gives you an idea. This is what the new template looks like. And so uh, there are some various differences, but hopefully you'll be able to tell when you log in. And so what I did is just, okay, well, Jumbotron section. How do I know what that's going to update? Well, it sounds pretty easy, Jumbotron, but as you work on it, it's a little intimidating in the beginning. And so the Jumbotron section is this very large picture that you'll see on your web page, which is marked in red. And then we have the content areas, which is a card. If you've never heard of the term card before, those pictures in the bottom right, you see a benefits accessoscope and accessibility and reasonable accommodations, those are called cards. They don't have to be pictures, they could be information, but the term cards uh, typically is used quite often. And so uh, this will give you an idea as to how it's broken down. And we're gonna go into this. I'm gonna actually exit uh, the PowerPoint again, and we're gonna go back to the dashboard. So when you first log into Cascade, and hey, Suze, you can just shake your head. You can see my dashboard, okay? Perfect, great, thank you. And so, um, when you step into the dashboard, there's a few things that you should know. So um, when you start working, uh, it's very easy to kind of get lost as you're going back and forth. So when you do start working under my content, um, all the pages links are, are here. So you can just hop back in and say, oh my goodness, what was I working on? Well, I was working on the LinkedIn page. I can actually click on this and it'll take me directly to what I was working on in the past. Now, what's really great is as you're working on the content, um, and I'll show you how to do this as well, but as you, as you save it um, to test, which means we're not actually publishing yet, um, it allows us to save everything here. And so even if you perhaps forget to save it, you can go back in here and see what you were working on previously and that helps out. Um, and so I, I do like this quite a bit. Now, I am, I have access to two different sites on the left-hand side. So I have group IOTA and group OD. So if you are in Cascade right now, you'll be able to see the, the sites that you have access to. And then um, some of the items we are not going to cover because they are a little bit more advanced. So we're covering the pieces that will make the largest impact for you right now. Um, as we move along through our learning, we'll be able to get into the more advanced sections. Now in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a little chat section. Just keep in mind, this is not a CPP chat. Um, they do often get messages 
and I'll click on that so you can see. This is from Hannon Hill. This is the actual, they manage the, the CMS site. And so if you send a message here, just keep in mind um, that does not go to anyone in, from CPP. And if you need support with this or have a question, um, of course, you can ask it here today or you can submit a ticket and that would be the best option for you. So now let's take a look at how we're going to locate our page in Cascade. So I'm going to give you an example. Now, if you are working through Cascade with me, what I'd like you to do is go to your CPP site or the, the page that you want to make edits to or that you want to work on. I'm going to give you a moment to do that now. So what I did was I went to my CPP, I went to the organizational organizational development page and I went to my LinkedIn learning because this is the page that I want to make edits to. So as you do that, I'm pulling up the PowerPoint again and I'm going to show you how we're going to break that down. Now, uh, Andrea. Yes. I just tried typing in my page and it gives me no matches. Is there something I should be doing other than copying the URL into? We the are select not. Select a site box. We are just, you're just finding the page. You're not actually going to do anything with it just yet. So if you found the page that you want to make edits to okay. um, on CPP, and then you could just stop there. In the, the sites box is where you select okay. the site, and then the site will have a listing of all the pages in the site. Thank you, Jason. So what I'd like you to do, and this is the part where um, we're going to break it down a little bit more. And so once you find your page that you want, you're going to use the address bar to locate your page in Cascade. So this is how you're going to break it up. And I even broke it down for you a little bit further down at the bottom. So the page that I want is LinkedIn and I'm, and I apologize, it's not lined up correctly in the bottom. So I hope that you can still see it. My apologies. So when you're looking at or your address barks, this is how it's broken down. So for me, after CP, uh, cpp.edu, I have OD. That's the folder that I'm going to look up in Cascade. The site folder, excuse me. So that's the main folder. Then what comes after that is catalog courses. That's the next folder. And the last thing listed here is file. So this is how you're going to find the page that you're going to make edits to. Uh, the reason why I like to do this side by side in the PowerPoint is because on the left hand side, once we access Cascade, you can see in the top left hand site there, the site page is group.od. So that's why I know I'm going to click on OD because that's what the site, the address bar says. Once I click on to the OD, I'm going to click on course or catalog courses. And let me, let me do my annotate really quickly just to make sure. So we have group OD. So group OD is my site folder. And then when we break it down a little bit further to catalog courses here, and here's catalog courses. And then I want to find LinkedIn, which is the file. So you can see these are, these are what, what considered, are considered folders. Then the file is down here in the black. That's LinkedIn. So I know I did receive some feedback that I went over this a little bit quickly in the first one. So I do want to stop for a second and see if we have any questions about this or if you were able to locate at least your page on we can go into Cascade right now. But I'm going to move on from here. So we're going to go into our site. I'm going to click on group OD because the address, that's what the address where I want to change is. And then I'm going to click on catalog courses and I'm going to click on LinkedIn learning the file, which is black. And so now I am on the page that I want to make edits to. So let's go into a few support areas here. So um, when you're on your page, let's take a look first at more. And so you can do a few things with the, the more section here on the top right, where you can do your full screen preview, but the part that um, if you wanted to go to your live page, so I'm gonna click on live and show you, it takes me to the actual live page that I, that I so let's say if you're making changes and you want to see what they look like and you actually do publish them, you can quickly identify on your, on your page. So this is the more section and I'm just going to make sure that there's everything else here that I'm going to go over. Um, the edit will be the one that we're working in most today. And then your submit button, which is where you're going to make your changes. 
So let's go ahead and start making our edits. And hey, Seuss, do we have any questions that we need to take a peek at? No, no questions right now for you to answer at C. Okay, thank yeah, you, Seuss. No, I think we're good, thank you. Okay, great. So we're gonna do a, a preview of the different areas and the sections here, and then we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint so I can show you what each part means. And so this is um, the top portion is kind of standard content that I'll, I'll show you in detail what that looks like. Then we have our content as far as pictures and cards and things of that nature. So for the new template, you'll see jumbo se Jumbotron section. You have the ability to do slideshow, which you'll see mine in the background kind of moving like a carousel, that's a slideshow. The content areas is what you choose it to be. So not all of the content will be the same when you click on it, and I'll show you briefly. Right now, I'm working on text and, and images. However, you have a lot to choose from, which we're gonna go over text um, and work briefly over cards and the accordion today. So if you wanna add more content, because you may only have Let's say one box here, you would click the plus and that you, that's how you could add more content to your page. Okay, so this is the part that I thought would be helpful and I hope it is to you. So this is when you first log in and you see the content section. Um, the very first part will not show as page content. This is just information for you. So. Um, if you want to use the LinkedIn learning, this is what is used for web browser and search engines. And so um, I do find that if you can put the information here, it's much easier for you to locate. And if you want people to find your, your page in a search, all of this is quite helpful. So for example, keywords, LinkedIn learning, this is helpful for Google searches and related words not in the content. So for example, one of the uh, examples we use is housing and dorms. And so if we use student housing, but Someone who may not be aware of that might use the word dorms, and so you can put keywords in there. And the description is a meta, a meta description. So um, this is an element that describes and summarizes the content. So if you ever look up something, and um, you'll see that there's a little tiny description on the website, uh, this is very helpful to show what it is that you're doing on this page. So, and really for the benefit of the user. So this is all content that will not show on your page. So. The display and navigation, this will display in the navigation menu on your site if you select yes. So if you remember, we showed the template, so we will have a display navigation, which I find to be helpful, especially for beginners. And the site navigation piece here, because I was trying to figure out what was I doing wrong, it's pre-populated. So you can leave it as is. And you'll see this on almost all of the content site, the beginning portion does look um, fairly similar. And the page header will display on your site. It's not required, but it's helpful for accessibility. So if it's the same as your department name, you could leave it blank. So there's gonna be a part where if you're gonna say, for example, um, the College of, let's say, Agriculture for your department name, you don't have to put it again if that's your page heading because it'll say it twice. Unless it's going to be different, you can put that there. So let's go over Jumbotron selection. And so, you can upload an image display as a jumbotron and text description provide details of picture for accessibility so we're really working hard on making all of our sites accessible um, at the end of this we will talk about pictures and and how to use them if you use very large pictures it can really be harmful um, to to the user in terms of uh, using a lot of data and things of that nature and then the slideshow is um, essentially alternative text and accessibilities. And so what I can do is if you find this helpful, I can even send you this PowerPoint. You can send me an email, hey, Jesus, if you can put my email in the chat box, that would be helpful. Absolutely. Thank you. And so what I would say for the slideshow piece, if you are a beginner, um, you may want to just practice a little bit with the the pictures and the accessibility but i'll maybe hold off on a link for the moment and if you're doing a slideshow it will tell you how many slides so how many pictures that you're going to need to upload so what i'm going to do is i am going to attempt to go back so that we can cover the content. 
Um, let me go a little bit further into the images. So if you don't know how to upload images, that's okay. We're going to have another training, especially for you. But if you do know how to upload them, um, it, it can be quite, oops, excuse me, quite helpful um, just to know where you're going to put the details and information. And so the images, the title, and all of the details, um, and you can even post a link on the site, which is really cool. And I know this is a lot of information. And I know we have a lot of beginners. So if you're not understanding the upload the photo part, that's okay. We'll make sure to discuss that so you can join us in another training. And then content area, which is where we're going to focus most of our time is um, content type is text and images. That's where we're going to start off at. So let's go back here. And I don't know if you are following along with me, but let's go ahead and we're gonna click on edit again. I'm gonna always start back at edit to, to avoid any confusion and also we'll update the page. So I am gonna to go to content and we're gonna select text and images. So this is what I like about, um, about this here. So um, I'm gonna go over the details. Let's talk about what you can do right now as a beginner. So this tool, here, um, it's very similar to what you would do in a, a hyperlink in an email, perhaps. And so let's do, I'm going to do LinkedIn again, LinkedIn Learning. And it's not doing my L, so I apologize. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So let me show you how we're going to maybe hyperlink if you wanted to put some in there. So I have insert and edit link. So let me go ahead and click on that one. What I do like is that this is actually like fairly simple. I'm gonna do an external link. I already have my LinkedIn learning page um, popped up here for change management. And so I'm going to do my link source and paste it here. And then I'm going to click okay. And there's my link. So the new one that we just created. So if you wanna do a link, that's how you can do it. If you just want information, you can literally just copy and paste or type whatever it is you need. And this can get your web page started. This can get things going. And all of these will be used just like you would um, in an email. If you wanna upload a picture, this is one of the easiest ways to do it on this site um, when you're doing text and images. When we're talking about cards, it is a little bit more advanced. So for now, this could be another great way just to get things started. You're gonna click on insert image and then you're gonna choose file and just upload and it'll show up. So this is what I did here was just the Bronco piece. That was my picture. And so um, once you're done with this piece, you can preview your draft. And you can see the new link that I have is already there. Now I am not going to submit it yet because I'm still making some changes. But let me stop for text and images quickly and see if we have any questions. We just got one in. So question regarding content. If I want to insert information, a PDF file, that changes on a somewhat frequent basis, is it better to insert a link to OneDrive file versus inserting a file? Um, I'll, <clears throat> I can take this one. Okay, Jason. So if you upload the PDF in the cascade and you give it like a generic name, you know, like, you know, registration, whatever PDF, you can actually click on that same file in cascade, click edit and upload a new version of it. And it will, it won't have to change any links, but will update the file. Um, alternatively, yes, you can do the OneDrive file. That is also another way because that will show you a lot of version histories and stuff. Um, so either one of those would work. Thank, Thank you very so much. Great question, thank you. I continue to learn, so I appreciate that. Now, when you're doing your text and images, and so let's say, for example, um, you're working on your page and you select this button. Now, what this button does is, so let's say you're not ready for the content to go live. What's happened to me several times is if I click on this button, it will actually hide the content. Later on, I try to figure out on the page, where's all the content that I just updated. Keep in mind, if you accidentally hit this button or you hit it, it will hide it. It will not show on publish. So if for our beginners, what I would recommend is just kind of leave that box alone. And if you're not ready for it to publish live, which means it actually goes to your website, you can publish to test. 
and I'll show you how to do that. That allows you to go back and make changes before it goes live. So this part, um, I feel like is one of the, the simpler forms that we can use to start making changes to our website now. Um, the other one I'm going to show is, I'm going to show you the accordion piece because I feel like that one uh, will be really, really helpful. So I labeled this here. Do you see where it says question and answer? Make sure whenever you're creating content or updating content that you label it because that's how you'll be able to locate it quickly in Cascade. And so content area name, question and answer. Now, for any of you who have sites where you have uh, like a, a drop down menu, a question, perhaps you do FAQs or um, you have a title where then you have a drop down menu of all different information that you need to be displayed. That's what an accordion um, is. That's what it does. And so you can select accordion or FAQs. And again, we're going to skip that hide content piece. And my title was LinkedIn Learning FAQs. And so um, you scroll down a little bit further. It says content or question answer group. So I am going to change this to well, what is today? I'll go ahead and leave that. You go ahead and put your question in here. And then you can put today is Tuesday, which today's Wednesday, right? <laughs> I know at remote work, sometimes I forget. And a holiday. I, yes, I that it is. It is okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad I'm accurate here. So I just changed it again. Um, just really, really simple steps for according to, FA, according to FAQs. And then... Uh, I did want to show you, oh, this is what I wanted. The show expand all button, I really like this. It gives a little character to your, um, your page. So let me preview the draft so you can see what that looks like. And here we go. So here are my LinkedIn Learning FAQs. So right now um, they are not expanded. That yes button I was just telling you about allows us to expand all. So what is today? Today is Wednesday. So if you wanted to list something here, you can expand all of the different responses. And again, it, it looks really professional, um, very helpful, and, and something that you can do um, quickly that, that isn't a high level of difficulty, hopefully. And so this is the accordion piece. I'm gonna stop for a moment and see if we have any questions with accordions. No questions in the chat area as of right now, Andy. Okay, sounds great. Has anyone used the accordion piece before? Out of curiosity, you can just throw that in the chat box. I hadn't used it before and that's why I ask. So we've gotten a yes, no, no. Yes, with an exclamation point. So I think okay. we're pretty, yeah, pretty excited about no. So we've got a pretty, good mix of answers. Some have, some haven't. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And so I, again, we just went over the accordion. We discussed text and images. So the last piece that we're going to talk about are cards. Now, cards are a lot more complex. So we're going to discuss some of it today in hopes that you can start uh, practicing with it on your own. And then we will be offering a detailed training just in cards. Um, because it does take some time to get used to. So if you remember on the page that we are referring to, um, on LinkedIn Learning here, let me show you. Um, I'm going to go back to Course Catalog because that'll give you. So this is an example of what cards are. So again, you don't have to use images here. You can also use uh, details and text. So I would say if you want to try it, go ahead and start doing with some text so that you can practice. Um, remember, unless you publish to, to go live, um, you can't really mess, mess this up. And so you can practice and you don't have to save it. Um, it it's a really great way to, to learn more about it. And so let me go back. And Andy, we did get a question. The question mm -hmm. is, how do you add a title to identify the cards? Um, a title in, in Cascade or one that will display on your web page. And I'll see if Marianne can unmute herself to sure. clarify. Oh, uh, in Cascade, please. And, okay, great. So what I did here, um, 
Um, let me show you where it's at as I can go down here. I have a little lower. So you have you have a title you can do for the whole area, like news or events. Yeah. Yeah, right here is the have, title. Right, you just I have it. the competencies right here. Okay, adaptability. It's like let me keep going. So um, as we go down further into this, the title here at the bot or not the bottom, but towards the middle to the end will be your title for the card itself. Now, if you see, I'm gonna go back to this page here. Um Oh, I didn't publish to live, my apologies. So you won't be able to actually see it. But um, you can do, like Jason was saying, you can do a title. So I have mine is listed here. So what I did for myself is this is a description for easy reference when editing pages in Cascade. So I did that competency. So that doesn't show on the page. That's just for me. As you work through the top section, typically that's going to be information for you for your knowledge purposes. And so as we start preparing our cards, what I would recommend um, is that you do normal um, here. So this is the style. So don't forget to select cards, uh, leave that blank, the hide content, because that could be a little bit confusing. For style, again, I would select normal. Now this is where you can uh, title the section if you need it, but each card will be down below. So down here, you would select how many cards you want for per row. So um, it is, the, what I have is auto because depending on how many cards you make, it will actually do it for you. It just makes it easier. But let's say if you wanted to start out with two because you're just starting to get used to it, go ahead and select two and it will evenly spread them apart depending on, on how you, you choose to align the cards. So down here, I have this selected because it will align, align the cards at the bottom. Um, I see a few, I don't know if those are questions coming in, Jesus, or anything that we need to respond to. Actually, it was Marianne thanking you. She said, a great thank you. Oh, no problem. Thanks, Marianne. So for now, for our beginners, we're going to say use a module in this card. We're going to select no. That's something that we'll go over um, that is going to be at the more advanced level. Um, even with this no, your web page will look fantastic. Uh, that just gives it a, a little bit more um, flair, we'll say. So if you need a blank card, um, this part for um, our moderate to advanced people, um, you may know what this is, but essentially it just gives you a blank card if you need a filler. Um, again, for the beginners, I would go ahead and leave that blank for now. And card style as normal. Um, for the text button alignment, this is preference. So this is really just where you want it to look, uh, how you want it to look on your page. Um, because of the way my page is going to be set up, I have done it as left. And I do have a border around the car because I do feel it looks nice. Now I know um, the person who had asked where the title is for the card would be here, adaptability. Um, now, if you wanna upload an image, again, if you know how to do that, this is where you can, you can choose the file. We are going to have a training about editing uh, and, and doing Photoshop for images that will work best for your web page. And if you wanted to get started on your cards using information or, or text, um, or even with, with images uh, that will be shown as text, if you wanna try that out, this is very similar to what we went over in the text, uh, in the text page. So you can copy and paste all of your information in here and it will display as a card. And so if you are highlighting, let's say doing a bio for someone, um, or bios for multiple people on your team and you're not sure how to use the, the images yet, you can still have the name and the bio in each of those cards and it does still look really cool. And so I am going to uh, stop there. I know we covered a lot of information and so uh, we do have some additional information we're still gonna cover. I just wanna do a check-in to see how is everyone feeling overall about what we've covered. Do you feel like the information um, was helpful or do we need to to cover some additional information and you could be honest uh, this is for you so anything that i can do to make updates or changes i want to make sure that i'm doing that for you i love kristen's response she wrote i know enough to be dangerous i know <laughs> well then i think that was great i did my job <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Marianne wrote, this has been very helpful on the font section. Can you customize the size? I only see even numbers. Over here, or do you, you mean the, the size in terms of, is this what you're referring to? And I'm I believe sorry. so, but we'll see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do. I mean, you still have within some, you still have some uh, freedom within your framework, but there definitely is a framework there. And so, yes, you can still alternate the size. You can even do um, the headings, like it even shows you if you want to have a heading. Um, when I first started learning Cascade, this is what I did for the cards because I found this to be the simplest form. And I am still learning, uh, definitely not an expert yet in the cards, but I hope to be before we get into our next session about cards. I, and so I'm guessing, because uh, Marion was asking as far as even numbers, so I'm guessing it's only 10, 12, it's only oh. eight of two so I'm guessing you can't do nine point or eleven point I'm guessing um, I don't have the ability the to do that oh I'm so sorry yeah, yeah. it's just the predefined sizes there gotcha. okay okay um, yeah. I think there was a place in there that increased font size somewhere it might be in one of the drop downs but I don't really use it so I don't remember okay so I am going to cut if we don't have any additional questions about the text the cards uh, or the, the accordion piece, we're going to go over some helpful tips. And if you have questions or comments, please go ahead and put them in the, um, in the chat box. And so as we start preparing to move forward with our um, uploading images and photos, and you want to start practicing, these are just some helpful tips. Um, when you are working on a site, and I wish I wanted to give an example to you um, and to show you if you use a really big photo, what that would do to your, your web page. Um, but I really wasn't able to find, uh, find one. I didn't want to use one from our site, of course. But um, the reason why we asked you to be very careful about the sizes that you're using is because it will affect the quality of your page. So not only will the picture potentially look distorted, um, but it will take a really long time to download. And so we want to make sure you're avoiding uh, large files. Uh, we also get rated, I think it was from Google, right, Jason? Yes. So we actually get rated. So if you want your site to be visible and used with those keywords and, and easily located, um, we do get rated by Google on the size and quality of the page. And I don't mean content, just the quality and size of the photos and data. So that's yeah, what you want to look out for. They do like, yeah, like you're saying, a couple of quality control things. And so they see how mobile friendly the page is, how quick it loads, and then that kind of influences your rankings on their searches. Perfect. Thanks, Jason. And that was something that I didn't know before. So that was really helpful. If you are starting to work on your photos, there are just some recommendations here. So for example, if you're doing square photo and you're familiar with the pictures, you can do a 400 by 400 for your photos. Um, the banner sizes are here as well, and even the cards, um, 300 by 200. Now, let's say, for example, you don't have pictures to use and you wanted to start practicing. Uh, I give you an example of, I found a picture of a camera, and on the bottom it says the size from 970 to 647. And so um, I would need to go into like, Photoshop and update that picture um, and make it a little bit more user-friendly. And that's what we potentially will be covering in, our, in one of our future workshops. Um, you can also, there's some free stock photo websites that I've placed here. Um, if anybody knows of any other free stock photo websites, can you please share with us in the chat box? We're always excited to be able to learn about more options. So I have Pexels, Pixabay, and Elements in Vado, which I found to be really helpful that we use for some of our training sessions and, and for Cascade. And so I'm going to stop for a second. And Andy, you did want me to remind you of the survey and also additional training recommendations because it's Perfect. about six, I'm um, sorry, just about 250. Perfect. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is let's talk about, after we talk about the photos, I am going to show you how to publish your page. And thank you for that reminder because um, I want to make sure we're able to do that too. Now, the publishing piece is, is actually probably one of the, um, the easiest parts of of the updates here. So once you're, um, you're done kind of updating and you preview, preview your draft, there's a submit button here. Now there's two things that you need to keep in mind when you submit your work, okay? 
publish to production. When I say publish live, that's what publish to production means to me. So of course, however that means to you, but that means it is going on your website. If you are not done, or maybe you're not comfortable with the content yet, but you still wanna make sure you save all of those changes, just click publish to test. Now publish to test will allow you to come back, make those updates, and it's fantastic. It's very helpful. So what we're gonna do is after we publish a test, we're going to check content. Now this is really nice. Um, some of the information on here is not always 100% accurate. So when you see there's a whole bunch of misspellings that come up, like I have listed here, it's HTTPS. Uh, we can go ahead and ignore that. And then we have um, the broken leak section. Um, you can always double, just take a, a quick look at those two because um, in majority of cases, the links have been fine. There's been one time where one of the links that I posted didn't work. And so just take a, a quick look through that as you move through. And mine is still thinking on accessibility. And um, it's really great that it'll check. So let's say you're working on a picture, but you forgot to put the description. It will let you know that there's an accessibility issue. So once they start working through, you can click on this arrow and you can see broken links. Now, again, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're in fact broken, but if you're using, let's say, I remember somebody in the beginning mentioned that they're working on um, an older website that may be in the old template. So you might want to check those links listed to make sure that they're still active and working. And then click on your arrow again and check for accessibility. It says table tag should have caption. And so um, with this one, I know that I actually have a, um, a description here. So we're all set. Once we're all done, we're going to click finish. And it says publish to test. Um, we can do comments for reviewers. So if you are updating a page uh, for on behalf of someone else, you can put this, you know, comments here if you like. And then once you're done on the top right hand side, you're going to click start workflow. And that is it. So the publish, uh, the publishing piece, I think is, uh, is one of the, the easier steps to work through. And so I'm going to stop for a moment oops, and see uh, if there's anything that I need to address, Jesus. Yes, uh, Pedro asked a question. Will there be a workshop on how to create a new site within our group? Uh, we haven't come up with all of the topics yet. So this actually is a great time for us to stop because that is one of the questions that I wanted to address. So. As far as topics that you would need um, that based on what we discussed today, what do you feel like you want to see more of? And if you can put that in the comments in the chat right now, because based on our previous uh, comments received, we know we, we want to have one for cards and that we want to have one for for publishing photos. So if, um, if you feel like you need the cards and photos, please feel free to put that in the chat as well. We'd love to know. If there's any other topics that you'd want to see, um, please put those in the chat. And if you need a new site created, like a brand new site created for your group, then um, you would need to su uh, submit a service de desk ticket because um, IT is the only one that can actually create the new site and then we can add you to it and then you can add content to it. Thanks, Jason. Perfect, and I'm seeing some content about uploading content uploading. So um, when we talk about like the photos and the Photoshop and documents, um, that's what we would be doing is how to, um, how to prepare documents and images to be uploaded into Cascade. And so I see a few, if there's any other comments that you'd like to see, please let me know. And then uh, if you can do me a favor, Jesus, um, if you wouldn't mind putting the, um, the survey in the um, in the chat box. Now, um, if you can, please take a few moments to fill out this survey. That would be extremely helpful to identify what changes need to be made or what went well that uh, you feel like we were able to support you. I'll say it's in the chat now. Thanks, Jesus. And so if you can go ahead um, and do that, if you feel comfortable and starting to do that now, please do. I'm gonna open that up. If you have any questions for myself or for Jason, we have a few minutes. And as you start thinking about your questions, we're also gonna pull up some resources, uh, some links for you as well.
It doesn't look like we have too many questions coming in. So as we start working on that survey, Jesus, would you mind also putting that resources, that the links in the chat box? For us Absolutely. Please? Thank you. These resources are on the login page where we had shown you, but I always find that I like to have the link saved as well. And so we can provide this to you. Uh, we have finished just a few minutes early. So thank you so much for your time and uh, your questions today. Um, I look forward to getting your feedback and seeing how we can continue to support you. Um, if you weren't able to follow along in Cascade, you can please register for January 26th. Uh, session and we'll continue to let you know of uh, other sessions that will be coming up in the future. Thank you everyone and I hope that you have a wonderful day. If you have questions, I will remain on the line for the next few minutes.